God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Come take a seat and join me for today's children's sermon. We are in the green season, the Sundays after Epiphany, when we think about how we grow in our love and faith in Jesus. Today, we hear Jesus calling us to follow him. Let's listen to our story. Last time, Peter shouted, pull! Andrew, James, and John pulled in their fishing nets, empty again. The men slumped in the boat. They fished all night, but caught no fish. Slowly, they rowed back to shore. They felt disappointed, tired, and hungry. Jesus walked up to them and got into the boat. People had gathered on the beach to hear Jesus teach. As they floated out into the water, Jesus said, Peter, try your nets one more time. Teacher, Peter groaned as he lowered the nets. There are no fish here. But Peter felt a tug and another. The fishermen struggled to pull in the nets. Flopping fish filled the boat. Impossible, yelled James. A miracle, yelled Andrew. Jesus filled our nets with fish, yelled John. Peter fell to his knees and whispered, Leave me alone, Jesus. I don't deserve this miracle from God. Don't be afraid, Jesus comforted. God's miracles are for everyone. Follow me. We won't catch fish anymore. We'll catch people. Peter dropped the nets, still wiggling with fish. The fishermen left their boats and followed Jesus. Jesus caught others along the way. Matthew, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, James, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas. Twelve men heard Jesus and followed him as disciples. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Susanna. Many women followed Jesus too. So we hear Jesus calling us to follow him to fish for people. In the waters of baptism, you have been made a child of God, a disciple of Christ. It is your job to follow Jesus and fish for people, to tell everyone you meet about Jesus and God's love. So don't be afraid to go out into the world and catch people and give hugs and high fives and tell everyone you meet about Jesus. Let's say a prayer, friends. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we give you thanks for the disciples who followed Jesus so bravely, who put down their nets and followed him so that they could catch people. Help us to catch people too, to share your love in the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The first reading is from Jonah, the third chapter, starting with the first verse. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter, starting with verse 29. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they have none and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God.
gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I love to tell the story of unseen things above. Of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love, I love to tell the story because I know it's true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else would do. I love to tell the story. T'will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his 
love. Perhaps as I spoke those words, you began to sing them. They are the words of a beloved hymn. I love to tell the story. And in Sunday's worship, we'll be singing that as we begin worship. But I wanted to remind you of it because today we're talking about a couple stories that I love to tell. I love to tell the story of Jonah, the story we heard from our first reading. This story is quite frankly hilarious. Jonah hears God's call to go and tell the Ninevites to repent. Now, that's not a call that Jonah wants, not a call that anyone wants. I hear that the Ninevites were the worst of the worst. They were the Assyrians, and the Assyrians had conquered Israel, and so no one really wanted to go to the Assyrians in Nineveh to tell them to repent because who knows what would happen to someone who would come with that message. And also, did we really want God's mercy to extend to those Ninevites? And so Jonah gets in a boat to go the entirely opposite direction of where God's calling him. And you know the story. There comes a big storm, and all the people on the boat are praying to their gods, but Jonah is asleep at the bottom of the boat. And they wake Jonah up, and they say, Jonah, Jonah, pray to your God to save us. And Jonah prays to his God, the God who created the seas and knows that this sea is in its unrest because he has not followed God's call. And so Jonah says, it's because of me that this storm is happening. Throw me overboard. And they do. They throw Jonah overboard. And all of a sudden, the crazy storm stops. And a big fish or a whale comes and scoops up Jonah from the sea. And Jonah lives in the belly of the whale for three days. And in that time, Jonah discerns that he probably should have trusted God. He begins to pray, and God changes Jonah's heart. Jonah receives God's forgiveness. And the whale spits Jonah out onto the shore. And Jonah follows through with this call. He goes to Nineveh. He tells the people to repent. He gives apparently the best sermon of the entire world's experience because the entire city repents. It's success, except Jonah didn't really want God's mercy to come to the Ninevites. And so he throws what could be the best temper tantrum in the Bible. But that's not the part of the story we get today. The part of the story we get is when God calls Jonah that second time, right after Jonah has been put onto the beach by the whale. And this time, Jonah listens. I wonder if part of your call story is like Jonah's, where you are reluctant to follow God's call. I wonder if part of your call story is like Jonah's, God having to ask again in order to get your attention. Maybe you had to spend some time in whatever might be equivalent to the belly of a whale for you to get. But I also love to tell this story of Jesus calling the disciples that comes from our gospel text. The plot is just getting started. John has been
been arrested, Jesus proclaims that the time is fulfilled, that the kingdom of God is now. Repent and trust in the good news. And then Jesus goes for a walk along the beach. And he sees Simon and Andrew casting their nets, and he says, follow me. And Simon and Andrew drop their nets immediately, and they follow Jesus. The same thing happens with James and John. They immediately follow as well, leaving behind their father in the boat with the hired men. It's surprising to me how fast they put down their nets. It's almost like they couldn't wait to get away from this work of fishing. The Bible commentator Ched Myers says that might be because being a fisherman was like being an indentured servant. Because of the way the politics work at that time, it was not a desired job. No one wanted doing to articulate what their work will be. He brings that work along with them as he calls them to fish for people. It's like Jesus is saying, bring all of who you are, all of what you've done before. We're going to put it to use in a different way. I wonder if part of your call story is like these disciples where you are ready to say yes immediately. I wonder if part of your call story is like these disciples. I wonder what you had to lay down to leave behind in order to follow God's call. I wonder if part of your call story is like these disciples. If God is calling you to use all of your life, all of the experiences you've had before, to now be in service to the kingdom of God. Friends, truth be told, I love to tell these stories, but I may not love to live them. Perhaps you're in the same boat. We don't want to work if the work we're called to by God is hard. We sometimes want to go in the opposite direction. We don't want to go immediately. We don't want to lay down whatever it is that we have to lay down in order to follow God and God's call. And we aren't sure how to bring all of ourselves to what is before us. In this weekend, this congregation is holding its annual meeting. And we continue together to follow God's call for this place and these people. And I feel like these things that we are called to do but might not want to do hit a little close to home. Because truthfully, I suspect that, we're, that I'm not alone in wanting to go the opposite direction sometimes, away from dealing with budget deficits. We don't want to be in the belly of the whale learning to trust God. Immediately feels like a bit too much urgency for us to handle. We don't want to lay down the nets that are the ways we have done things, the way the church has been for so long so that we can follow God's call here and now. We worry. And 
yet, and yet I can catch the vision. I can see the vision. I feel trust in myself the size of a mustard seed. Trust that God is up to amazing things in this place through us all. And that helps me. That helps me begin to live the story before us, this story, our story. I wonder how we'll tell our story a year from now. I wonder if we will love to tell that story. I hope, I hope we will love to tell that story. You know, sometimes when you're in the midst of a story, it's hard to keep on going. It's hard to trust what will come. And when that happens, I find it helpful to tell the old, old stories, to remind ourselves that God has been faithful in the past, to remind ourselves that God can and God has and God will. with someone else or want to call someone else to call them and tell your story. I want you to tell a story of a time that, <coughs> excuse me, that God was present in your life and you followed God's call. How did it feel when you were in the midst of it? Were you excited to follow God's call like the disciples? Did you want to go in the opposite direction, like Jonah? What did you have to leave behind, like those disciples left their nets, to follow God's call? How did God use the gifts that you had and do amazing things with them? Take some time to tell your story because your story matters. Our story matters. Because we are part of God's unfolding story. I love to tell that story. We will love to tell this story, the one we're living in each day right now. But first, we have to follow God's call. God, give us the courage. Amen.
let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate Christ's embodiment in human form, we pray for God's blessings on the church, the world, and all creation. God, our rock and deliverance, do not let your church be shaken. We trust you never abandon your promises to the most vulnerable among us. Give your church wisdom and empathy in this varied ministry. God of grace, receive our prayer. God, our hope and refuge, you place the fish in the sea. Guide our cares of oceans and all creatures that live in them. Hold us accountable for actions that endanger water sources and the people who depend on them. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who proclaims judgment and offers mercy, be a model to the leaders of our nation and of the world. As they lead, may they follow your way of justice and truth. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who cares for the suffering, cares for the survivors of assault and sexual abuse and sustain all those who minister to them. Keep safe any who live under the threat of violence, living in poverty and among us who are ill, in pain, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. God of grace, receive our prayer. God of resurrection and new life, as the first disciples shared the good news, empower us, this faith community, to open to your call. When we are uncertain of your call, assure us. When we have strayed from your ways, redirect us. Be present with us this day as we hold the meeting of the budget and elections. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who holds the saints against your tender bosom, we trust you welcome them into your care. Comfort those who grieve, even as we place our hope in your salvation. God of grace, receive our prayer. about the ministry of this place. The first is a reminder that we have our annual meeting this Sunday, January 28th at 1035 in the parish hall. If you're able to come, I would love to have you present. If you're looking for a Zoom link for that, contact us and we'll get that to you. If you're not able to come, please keep us in your prayers. I also give thanks for the generous giving that you all do to make this ministry of Mount Olive continue in the ways that we are church for the whole community. 
On your screen, you'll see a QR code that you might use to give generously, or you can check out links in the summary. We'd love your generosity to help us do this ministry. Thank you for who you are and how you're part of this congregation. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell your one of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life in you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks.
praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom. The power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you. Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.